here just for you. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, we're good. We're going to get going here. So if I can have everyone's attention. Um, my name is Kevin Kabitzer. I'm with Unita Pere Kanatami, and I will be your MC today. Uh, we acknowledge that we are in a traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin Nation. So welcome, all of you, our guests, and uh, the members of the media back there, welcome to our event today. And thank you for joining us today as we launch the National Inuit Strategy on Research. I just want to uh, also say that we are on Facebook Live. Um, I think the camera is on over here. Yeah? So hello everybody, if you can hear me. Uh, thank you for joining us and enjoy the show. So it's been a long journey a really long journey to get to where we are today. And it's, it is a very, very proud moment um, for us, for Inuit Nunangat, uh, and for those who have worked so hard to build a path for a better, more inclusive way to do research throughout our homeland. And so today we will hear from dignitaries and special guests uh, who will tell us why this work is crucial and the vision we have for a more meaningful and mutually beneficial uh, relationship between Inuit Nunangat and the research and scientific community. And we are very honored to have with us today to speak on the launch of the National Inuit Strategy on Research. Uh, we have President of Inuit Tapere Kanatami and National Inuit Leader, Mr. Nathan Obed. We will hear from Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs, the Honorable Carolyn Bennett. Member of the Inuit Kauai Sabingat National Committee, Mr. Gregor Gilbert. President of Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, Mr. Ted Hewitt. Uh, we'll also be hearing from President of Na Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, um, Dr. Um, or rather Mr. Ted Hewitt. Sorry about that. Did I mess that up? Mario Mario Pinto. Sorry about that. Dr. B. Mario Pinto. Would you allow me to do that once more? <laughs> President of Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, Dr. B. Mario Pinto. There we go. <laughs> and last but not least, we're going to be hearing from President of Universities Canada, Mr. Paul Davidson. Can you tell I'm a little bit nervous? <laughs> My man. And after we hear from our special guest, the main course of lunch will be served. And I hear uh, that we'll be eating Arctic char uh, all the way from Cambridge Bay, Nunavut. So we're in for a real treat today. And shortly thereafter, ITK's executive and political advisor, Mr. Tim Argetsinger, will give us an overview of the National Inuit Strategy on Research. And he will give us the context to the work, uh, who was involved, and why the strategy is so important to Inuit Nunangat. So Mr. Argetsinger's presentation will be followed by 
a question and answer period. So you'll uh, get a chance to ask him a few questions uh, about the strategy. And to help us get uh, today's event started, we will be treated to some performances from the very talented students of the Nunavut Sivanik Silver Training Program. So let's give a warm welcome to the Anna students. I guess it's good lunch now. Um, uh, we're going to have a performance for you guys today. I would like to just say thank you so much ITK for inviting us over for cultural performances. We always love to do that. And before we start, I just want to say that the national strategy for research in Inu Yunaga is actually very relevant to us because during our entire course in the second year program, we have a research course, and we learn things like uh, the research ethics, what has happened in the past, what needs to improve, and so on. <clears throat> and so that's, that's really relevant to us, and I'm, we're really glad that research today is way more culturally relevant than in the past. Now, a lot of you are wondering why we're here. Our MC just announced it. We're going to have a performance for you guys today. And that is also culturally relevant because one, we love to perform, and two, this gives us a lot of awareness of what our traditional values are, and it also gives awareness to people all over Canada that we are strong and that we're trying to improve Inuit Nunenga through cultural performances. Now, the first song is called Inuit Sibunik Senga, and this translates to mean our future, our land. section is we're going to be dancing from here on out. So the next section are going to be songs and dances from one of the Inu Yunaga regions, the Inu Valley region. Now these songs and dances were taught to us by two amazing instructors from the region, Scott Kasuk and Debbie Gordon Rubin. And we're going to start off with something called Scraping Skins. Now Scraping Skins is a men's dance and it's sung by the woman and it's for the cultural importance of having seal skin and caribou polar bear pelts in our culture.
next song we're going to be showing you guys is one of my favorites. It's also danced by the men, and this time it's called the polar bear. Now, the polar bear, as you may know, is the most fierce, the strongest animal in the Arctic. section, we're still going to be doing Inuvalu dances, but this time the women are going to dance and the men are going to go back and sing. The first woman's dance is called Imam Yuak and it was taught to us by Jimmy Memogana. He was a very talented man and Imam Yuak means when two ocean currents meet and form a whirlpool. of joy and this song represents the joy that we have when the sun comes back. Another round of applause. Amazing. I am very 
pleased to introduce now our first speaker. He is from Nei Nunatsiewut and has devoted his career working to help improve the well-being of Inuit in Canada. Please welcome the president of Inuit Tepere Kanatami and our national Inuit leader, Mr. Nathan Oben. Kevin, uh, welcome everyone to Nasugitsi. I'm proud to be here on, on this day of the release of the National Inuit Strategy on Research. And I wanted to thank Nunwut Sivanisut and uh, the performance you just gave this morning. Amazing to always start off with such energy and also a reflection of our culture and our language. It's hard to encapsulate uh, where this research strategy fits within the broader work that we want to do because research is something that is cross-cutting across all of our professions, all of our studies. It affects us every single day. It affects the policies uh, that governments put forward. So I thought I'd stop and pause and talk about Inuit first. We are a people uh, that has, have been occupying Inuit Nunangat, our homeland, for time immemorial. We have a very specific and distinct culture and society and language, and we also uh, are an oral tradition, an oral culture. That does not mean that we do not have structure around our society. It does not mean that we don't come to knowledge in a very specific way. And a set of structures that have been put in place over time that allow us to understand the world, not just in anecdotal fashion, but through what perhaps many of you would call a scientific method. And we have a governance and a society that, uh, that we are proud of. In the last 100, 150 years, we have lost much of that self-determination, and now we're in the process of regaining it. So we have now an Inuit democracy. It is not the same Inuit democracy that existed in the 1700s or before. It is one very specific to this point in time. And so ITK is the National Representational Organization for Canadian Inuit. We have four land claim regions, uh, Nunatsiavut in northern Labrador, Nunavik in northern Quebec, Nunavut in the territory, the public government of Nunavut, and the Inuvialuit region in the Northwest Territories. These four land claims have Inuit within them that are, that are represented through these rights-based organizations. Nunavut Tungavik, the Inuvialuit Regional Corporation, Makivik Corporation, and the Nunatsiv government hold the rights of Inuit. Those four organizations, along with the National Inuit Youth Council, Pabututi Inuit Women of Canada, and the Inuit Circumpolar Council of Canada, comprise the Inuit Tapirik Kanatami Board of Directors. So we have a structure in place in order to put forward positions. So the strategy that um, you've been given here at the door, the strategy that we will now hope to implement, has its foundation in positions that are taken through an Inuit democracy. In the past, that has not mattered. It hasn't mattered to governments. It hasn't mattered to academic organizations. It hasn't ma mattered to the research community. There has been an imagination that there is a blank space in Inuit Nunaga, and that that is filled by people who are explorers, people who um, are saviors, people who come in and explain the world to us, or explain the world, our world, to the rest of society in a way that we could never do ourselves. We're, and part of this process is to reclaim that self-determination and to do it in a very specific um, fashion that upholds Inuit self-determination and that imagines that we can be partners with one another. It imagines that within the Inuit democracy we have partnerships that allow for positions to be taken, whether at the community, the regional, the national, or international levels. And it also imagines that we can work with the federal government, Minister Bennett. We can work with provinces and territories. Uh, we can work with academic institutions. And we can work with 
the research community. And this is all going to be possible only in a shared perspective, only in a way that we mm -hmm. all agree that we have specific components to this larger picture. In, if you're thinking of this just as an, as an average person looking in on this world, it is really strange to consider that there are no Inuit that are on any of the governing councils of any of the major research institutions, and, ne and there have never been Inuit on those governing bodies. That we are not a part of um, the research ethics processes that exist in most academic institutions when decisions on Inuit Nunagat projects are flowed through those entities. That um, in the past, the federal government would do uh, a whole host of different research exercises in our homeland and then would describe the world to Canadians without allowing for us to be a part of that process, to partner with us. As much as people want to say that research is objective, it is not. There is a subjective element to the way in which you describe the world, the way in which you describe findings. So the ownership, control, the access, the participation of Inuit within the research process is an important step and does not diminish research itself. It actually enhances it. What we're all striving for is a greater understanding of the world and whether it is in the biophysical world or the social environments in which we live. Inuit have a significant and important role, an essential role, in all of that work. I want to thank all of the people who helped make this research strategy possible, starting with the Inuit Kauai Sarvangat National Committee, who are here uh, today. I want everyone to stop and just give them a round of applause for the work they've done. Because it is the technical leadership, um, the people who are at the front line of the relationship uh, that then can inform a larger strategy and how that happens. The political will of our board of directors to approve this strategy and to allow for ITK to uh, now champion this uh, as directed by our board of directors. And then also for all the people here in the room today who want to be a part of this big change. This, uh, this new way of looking at the world, starting from the federal government and uh, working its way through all the different uh, partners that I see in this room today. Uh, it's important to know that we, we are not looking to take all the money that currently exists for Inuit Nunagat research and then just hoard it ourselves. This isn't the end goal of Inuit self-determination research. It is, it's, a, it's that we want the relationships to exist in a much better way, and in a way that are respectful for our democracy, respectful for us as an indigenous people. It may end up that we will control more research funding. It may end up that we will have more decision making. And in order for this strategy to be implemented correctly, that must happen. But the way in which that happens, I think, elevates all of our end goals. If we are committed to reconciliation, if we are wanting to um, have redress for past wrongs, if we do want to have our communities think of research as a positive thing, then we need to implement this strategy. We need to change the way we think about how research happens in Inuit Nunagat and for Inuit in this country. I'm very pleased now 
to introduce our next speaker. Before entering political life, she was a family physician and assistant professor at the University of Toronto. The 2015 election marked the sixth time she has been elected to represent the Toronto riding of Toronto St. Paul's. Please welcome Minister of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs, the Honorable Carolyn Bennett. Thank you. We, we just always love um, the welcome and the language uh, when, when you uh, are uh, our host uh, at these events. Thank you so much. And uh, I just wanted to say how much I think we all enjoyed um, the songs and the dance from the New Vialuit uh, region. I think a lot of us spent a whole evening um, in talk uh, watching the different dances and the the male and the female and the roles and uh, the stories that are told through dance and music and so we we thank you so much and it's interesting uh, just as I was watching you I was thinking of of how that road to Tuck uh, was the blend of science and research and and how now as we open up parts of the Arctic how how literally the sensors for climate change and all of those things are actually built into that road um, so that, that, that Northerners will be able to, and Inuit will be part of, of, uh, of first the facts and then part of, the, of, of finding the solutions. Uh, I come to this day uh, very excited, uh, I think as uh, was said, uh, I ended up an accidental tourist in politics because of the fight for Women's College Hospital. Uh, Women's College Hospital was a place where we decided that women um, should have a say in the research um, that was about women. Uh, that 15% of the funding went to women's health research and women had no say in really what the priorities were uh, of, of what actually women felt were their top priorities in terms of the issues that needed to be researched. So today is a very exciting day in terms of how the ITK and, and, and the Inuit are now going to say that they, they are going to, in their democratic um, institutions, be able to direct and have Inuit um, determine their priorities and how they work um, with research. And I think that we felt um, very strongly um, when we were at the Arctic Circle meeting in Reykjavik uh, in the fall, um, this um, real, um, I think, uh, worrying um, understanding of the Arctic uh, as a common good um, by other nations as opposed to, I think, what Canada wants to stand strongly behind, which is that, uh, that the Arctic is for the people that live there, and it means that the Inuit must have a very strong say in the policies and the, the fact-finding and the research that takes place in the North. That this has to be about us going forward with the kind of leadership that, that actually, as Natan said, in terms of what research is, of uh, proving hypotheses, um, instincts, being able to prove and, and use indigenous knowledge and, and worldview to, to actually have Inuit um, be part of the vetting of projects, the, the, the understanding of, of what data could mean, what is your instinct of what this means to you, so that we actually don't go down some other road, but actually have it actually based in the in the Inuit um, life and, and way of knowing. So we are, I think, um, very excited that, that as we open the Higher Arctic Research Station and with Inuit on that board, with it, there being an understanding that in the hiring processes and the uh, and the researchers there that, that, that it is about knowledge and, and, and the, the creating of new knowledge, the epistemology that comes out of good research, that it will be Inuit instincts and Inuit knowledge that will drive a lot of the work there and that, that it doesn't really matter 
what letters are after your name, if you can actually, as an elder or as a, an uh, Inuit knowledge keeper, be able to contribute to the science, then that, that actually has to be the way that Canada shows its way in the world. As we know, we want to do better um, in, in righting the wrongs of the past that, that Natan outlined. As a policymaker, we know that research drives policy, which drives practice. We actually need to do a better job in the, from the research to the policy in that knowledge translation that also must be in the context of Inuit. From policy to practice, we need to help mount the political will that takes that policy into practice. But then we have to be able to have the resources to do the, that, that, the real applied research of the practice back to better research. And so in that virtuous cycle between research policy practice, it, it only moves more quickly when, when people, when citizens are engaged and when, when in the, in Inuit are able to say that's important, we know this now, why aren't you doing it? That that, that so that, that inclusion of citizens and, and Inuit in the Nunungak being able to, to know what's going on and, and to make us and push us all as governments and democratic institutions to do better. So I just want to say thank you um, for all the hard work that's been done. I think the priority areas of, of Inuit governance in research, the ethical conduct of research, uh, aligning funding with Inuit research priorities, ensuring Inuit ask, access, ownership and control over data and information, and building the capacity in the Inuit Nunungak research. I, um, the, the, uh, obviously, my department uh, of Crown Indigenous Relations and Northern Affairs looks very, very forward to, to having this partner in terms of as we look, work together on the, on the future of your priorities and, uh, and getting this done. Research needs to be a very important part of the new Arctic policy framework. We know that that, that is something that is being co-developed um, with, uh, with our partners and in the territories um, and the provinces, but particularly with Indigenous rights holders and, and particularly Inuit. So, I just want to say uh, thank you um, for all the hard work, uh, Natan and your whole team, and we, uh, we look forward uh, to the future uh, of evidence-based policy uh, and, and the way that we get to work together in true partnership. So thank you, Nakamik Kuinamik. Minister Bennett, Opagayak Langa Dema, Ilita Pahimak Mart, Pemakoago, Kawi Hang New Yut, Inuit, Ilagi Yelte, Ilautita Teranga, Kawi Hang Namik, Atuagadam Namik, Amalutako Atuagat, Atuagat Taunamik, Kayuhita, two drama, Tapakuyatin, Takuhalatin, and Hakatit Yu drama, Matalago with Tamakuni of Havavit Minister. Um, I just want to uh, make a quick comment about uh, Facebook Live. We are actually um, seeing viewers from Nunatsiavut. We have people from Nunavut and even from Texas, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> and um, the National Inuit uh, Strategy on Research is available on itk.ca, so check out our website. Uh, we will now hear from Mr. Gregor Gilbert, Mr. Gilbert has extensive experience dealing with wildlife co-management issues, including Inuit harvesting rights, uh, wildlife conservation, and international trade of wildlife. He is currently serving as the co-chair to the Canadian Polar Bear Technical Committee and the chair of the Quebec EU Marine Region, Nunavik Marine Region Polar Bear Working Group. He is also the member appointed by Makibi Corporation to the Inuit Kawi Sablinga National Committee. Please welcome Mr. Gregory Gilbert. Um, I've been told to keep this short, and I think that's 
wise, people who heard me speak before know I can be a bit long-winded. So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, first of all, uh, as one of the longest standing members of the Inuit Kaurisavan National Committee, and uh, that's IQNC for, for short, uh, I want to take the opportunity to thank the members of the committee for expressing their faith in me and choosing me to come up here and speak on their behalf. I also want to thank uh, all of the ITK staff that have been instrumental in moving the National Inuit Strategy and Research forward and who have also given the IQNC the platform to develop a strategy in a manner that allowed for meaningful input from the four Canadian Inuit regions. Nunatsiavut, Nunavik, Nunavut, and the Inuvialuit Settlement Region. This reflects both our regional and our shared priorities. We feel this strategy is an important element in reinforcing Inuit self-determination and rights at the community, regional, and national levels. It also represents a fundamental paradigm shift, laying a pathway whereby research is conducted by Inuit, for Inuit, and empowering our communities and regions and leading to evidence-based decision-making with Inuit collected and analyzed data. Our committee is also committed to quickly developing an implementation plan for this strategy. We've been directed by the ITK Board of Directors to develop a plan that will, re that will result in the actualization of the strategy. During the time frame of this strategy, from 2018 to 2022, the IQNC is looking forward to developing these partnerships with researchers, academic institutions, governments, and of course other Inuit. Research partnerships that are founded on the principles contained in the strategy. These partnerships will strengthen the quality of research conducted and leading to improved well-being for Inuit in our communities. The National Inuit Research Strategy addresses a long-standing need faced by Inuit across Canada. The inequity that currently exists has been around for a long time. Over 40 years ago, the late Mark R. Gordon, who was one of the first presidents of Makivik Corporation, the lands claim organization that I work for, stated the following. There are many ways to be poor in today's world. Not having the right kind of information represents a certain kind of poverty. As long as outsiders decide what is important and are in the position to ask all of the questions, we will never be able to solve all our own problems. Without information, we are nothing at all and have no power to understand or change our life. If Inuit society is to develop, we must be able to collect and use information according to our terms. If we continue to lose information, the age of computers will overwhelm us. The national strategy uh, the National Inuit Strategy on Research finally provides a path to undoing the inequity that Mark Ork Gordon saw. It represents an unprecedented opportunity, and we feel that this opportunity must not be wasted. Ayanamik, Nakamik, thank you. Merci. Uh, we will now hear from uh, Mr. Ted Hewitt. Mr. Hewitt's recent research has focused on national and international innovation systems with emphasis on the roles of universities, industry, and government in promoting economic prosperity in the 21st century. He is the inaugural chair of the new Canada Research Coordinating Committee. He is also Canadian co-chair of the Canada-Brazil Joint Committee for Cooperation on Science technology and innovation, and a member of the board of the Brazil-Canada Chamber of Commerce. Please welcome President of Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, Mr. Ted Hewitt. Thank you for that uh, wonderful uh, introduction, and uh, I want to say, uh, Madame la Ministre, uh, Monsieur Obed, Madame la Ministre, it's, it's a great pleasure, but also a great honor uh, for me to be here today uh, and, to, and to be able to address you. And, and I have to say, this is the first time I've ever been out live on Facebook to so many parts of the world. And, uh, I want to welcome everyone to this, uh, to this event. I want to congratulate ITK, uh, all of the folks who worked so hard 
uh, to develop this research uh, strategy. Uh, it's a wonderful document. You know, and we've discussed uh, the fact of how for many years the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council has worked to support Indigenous research. But I will say, just as quickly as both Minister Bennett pointed out and Nathan pointed out, much of that research and much of that money has gone to researchers and to research projects that were developed in the South on behalf of or in uh, uh, territories in the North. Um, I want to tell you, uh, and I think you know because we've discussed this, uh, that SHRC in recent years has moved a great distance towards focusing on research, as we say, that's been done by and with Indigenous communities, and you have our uh, commitment, my personal commitment, commitment of my organization to continue to move more strongly and more forcefully towards that approach, which is completely in keeping uh, with your own uh, research strategy. Uh, so we look forward uh, to discussions uh, with you uh, and ITK and the community as a whole on strengthening these commitments and finding ways to strengthening uh, such commitments to research specifically by and with Inuit communities, uh, particularly in the context of our uh, work uh, on uh, TRC 65. As was mentioned uh, as well, I'm the chair of the new uh, Canada Research Coordinating Committee. Uh, research by and with Indigenous communities is a key element of the work plan of this group. Uh, and you will be hearing more about our implementation uh, strategy in the uh, days and, and weeks ahead. Uh, we are working, as I said, uh, to strengthen uh, our approach uh, towards funding uh, Indigenous research. This was a key priority of the two ministers, the two ministers, Minister uh, Duncan and Mr. Pedro Taylor, uh, in their open letter uh, to the members of the CRCC, and uh, we are very proud uh, to take leadership in, uh, in developing uh, this approach to, uh, to research more broadly. So I will say again, uh, great work, uh, congratulations, uh, it's a phenomenal event, I'm enjoying uh, every aspect of it, and again, very honoured uh, to be here today. Thank you for inviting me. Um, we're going to keep moving along right here. So our next speaker is Dr. V. Mario Pinto. Uh, Dr. Pinto is a chemical biologist by training. He served as professor, chair of chemistry, and vice president uh, research at Simon Fraser University. Uh, Dr. Pinto is an accomplished researcher and a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. In his current role as the president of Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, he has spearheaded a new strategic plan built on equity diversity, and inclusion. Please welcome Dr. Mario Pinto. Well, thank you for that kind introduction, Minister Nathan. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's an honor and a pleasure to be with you at this very special celebration, and it is a celebration. And I congratulate you on your accomplishments today. As president of ENSA, I've spent a great deal of time talking to different stakeholders. I've also focused on listening closely to as many voices as possible. Those of scientists and engineers, research users, politicians, industry partners, community leaders, community elders. I spent 31 years in British Columbia doing a great deal of work with the different First Nations groups. No matter what one's language or background, science provides a common space, a conduit for diplomacy. Science represents an opportunity for collaboration, a chance to gather different perspectives, to understand and to drive change. And that, I think, is what we are here today to do. At ESSO, we have made it a priority, therefore, to actively encourage greater dialogue within the research community, as well as between our organization and others. We've made it a priority because dialogue has become something of a lost art. We have gone from the sublime to the ridiculous, and it's time to go back to the sublime. 
but it's more than just about dialogue. In MSO's five-year strategic plan, we established a specific goal to increase the diversity of the research enterprise. The benefits of diversity in research, business, and community are well documented. Diversity increases the power of the line of sight, and with this vision, allows us to imagine and devise novel solutions to challenges that face us. In the natural sciences and engineering, we are well aware that we face challenges with the underrepresentation of groups such as indigenous peoples and women. We have therefore made increasing diversity a strategic priority so that we can begin to address this problem. One of the areas we wish to discuss is how to increase the capacity for research among underrepresented groups, and I look forward to engaging in that dialogue. On behalf of ANSWER, let me thank you for opening the door to let us participate in this event and to engage in conversation. We look forward to greater dialogue with you and with our other federal government partners. Let's move forward in the spirit of creativity, which, like dialogue, is a vital spark in the research process. Finally, let's move forward in the spirit of optimism. I used to be a folk singer, and there was a song I used to sing many years ago by David Bradstreet, and the refrain went something like this. I won't sing for you, but... How can I paint rainbows with only these blues? So let's be optimistic. Thank you very much. And last but not the least, we invite Mr. Paul Davidson. Mr. Davidson has played leadership roles in government, the private sector, and the voluntary sector for more than 25 years. In his current role, he is building strong partnerships with businesses, uh, business post-secondary education, and community leaders to advance a vision of higher education that promotes opportunity and excellence for Canadians. Please welcome President of Universities Canada, Mr. Paul Davidson. Merci beaucoup, c'est très un grand plaisir d'être parmi vous uh, aujourd'hui. Nathan, colleagues from ITK, Minister Bennett, colleagues Mario and Ted, what a wonderful day to be together. And especially to the students in the room today, and especially to the researchers in the room. What an exciting day this is for all of us. You know, I speak on behalf of 96 universities across the country. And that's a great privilege. And one of the best parts of that job is that when I'm meeting with students, I can feel 35 years younger, and I feel that way today. And when I speak with researchers, we can look 50 years into the future. And I mention that because 35 years ago when I was a student at Trent University, these ideas about control, these ideas about, uh, about, uh, uh, about co-creation of knowledge, were really at the margin. They were really at the, at the frontier. And now they're coming into the mainstream. When we have ministers of the crown committing to this, when we have granting councils committing to this, we're really at an important point in our relationship. And when we think about the research that will be done together over the next 50 years, think of the world that we can create together, building and learning together from that deep, those deep wells of knowledge that, are, that have not yet been tapped. Universities Canada sees ITK as a really important partner in advancing the power of higher education, of research, for community benefit. And we're, we were proud to stand with you in 2011 when you launched your national education strategy. And we were proud that you stood with us when we launched our set of indigenous principles in higher education. That was just in June of 2015. And since then, you know, great principles. Since then, we've seen universities adopt these principles into strategic plans, into academic plans, and now into research plans. Because we're not just talking about principles, we're talking about action and real change. We're so pleased to have an ongoing relationship with ITK, 
and to achieve the shared vision that's contained within the national strategy. There's so much work to be done, and Canada's universities will be your partners through this. Congratulations, and what a wonderful day to celebrate together. Thank you. Paul, uh, and that means we can eat chart now, now that all these remarks are done. Happy? <laughs> so um, we're going to take a short break, and our uh, chart will be served. And in a little bit, Mr. Ar uh, Tim Argetsinger will give a presentation on the National Inuit Strategy on Research. So enjoy your lunch. Have a Tim. Thank you. Congratulations. 